first question we have is platform Bluehost question um, mark. So I'm wondering, Betsy, um, can a platform Bluehost is a hosting for your website. And so I do recommend Bluehost. I think they've been great to me. They, they do a really good job of hosting your website. But in regards to where you would upload your video, um, tell me if I'm wrong, Brendan, but I think that would be probably YouTube or Vimeo, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. OK, so or directly to Facebook. Yes, all correct. Right. Um, all right, so then we also have what plugin? I'm a novice. So um, do you use uh, WordPress? Uh, what platform do you use for your website? Um, so I'm interested in a plugin for video. I think you just embed it probably from um, directly from YouTube. How do we get over our discomfort with our own voice and visuals and focus on the message? I would love to hear your thoughts on that, Brendan. Yeah, and, and Connor, feel free to weigh in on that too. Um, yeah, basically the question is, how, how do we get over self consciousness? Our own yeah, that kind of our own voice and visuals, all of that. Yeah, um, I think it honestly it takes practice. Um, and uh, I mean, I, we're, everyone's at a different place for that. So, so if it takes going in front of a mirror, even um, doing videos on your phone, you know, taking your take your phone and, and setting up and doing a selfie video without sharing with anyone and watching it. And it's, it's kind of painful. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, you have to get through that, um, that pain of it and realize I'm an imperfect person. I am who I am. And, um, and, uh, people are going to have to, you know, see, see me as I am and that that's going to be, have to be okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think that there's two books that have really helped me with my public speaking in general, both by the same author, Carmen Gallo. Gallo. Uh, and so The Storyteller's Secret is a really great book for that, and Talk Like Ted, where he looks at the top 200 TED Talks and what they all have in common. So Talk Like Ted and The Storyteller's Secret, um, having some stories that connect with your, your purpose or what you're talking about really helps you kind of get over that anxiety because it's like you could tell stories all day long to your friends of things that you've experienced, and there's not a right or wrong way to do it. Um, but I think when you kind of get in that storytelling mode and it's like, I'm just sharing what I've experienced, that makes it a little easier too. Totally. Yep. Yep. And Connor has a great comment on here and he says um, to, uh, to, you know, focus on your ideal client and their needs, get out, get out, out of yourself, you know, think of, think about kind of lose yourself in thinking about um, your, your ideal client and, and really, really uh, let your empathy kind of blossom. Okay. And I think it, you'll kind of start forgetting about yourself. Here's another great question. It says, will you address uh, YouTube versus Vimeo pros and cons? Yeah. I'd like to hear that as well. Yeah. So a great pro to YouTube is it's much more social. It's much more a social media platform. And, um, and, uh, the con to it is that after you're done, you know, after people are done watching your video, all these other videos pop up for you to watch. And that's kind of annoying. Um, uh, Vimeo is, is something that we actually don't use very much. We use YouTube. Um, but, uh, Vimeo I think is a little bit cleaner. You don't get as, as crazy of a, you know, after the video is done, you don't get this crazy pop up of all these different um, videos to watch. I think it's fewer. I think it's like three videos that pop up, but you can also pay to not have those come up. So um, they're both you actually great. Uploading to both of them. Um, I, I think I, well, if you have time to do that, I, I mean, I would try to choose one um, and and kind of stick with one. Um, just like with social media, you kind of want to start with Facebook only and just do well at that um, and move on once you kind of have mastered that. So yeah, um, I would say just think, kind of stick with one. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Vimeo is much more. Pro. Oh, go ahead. Vimeo is more of a, is more of a um, high quality um, kind of a platform. So yeah. Yeah. I think one thing with YouTube is so many of the smart TVs are just coming with that as a basic kind of app within the TV, whereas Vimeo is not as common. So um, even we didn't have a smart TV for a long time, but then even just the ease of being able to jump in there, uh, I think mm -hmm. you're more likely to get discovered by people that weren't necessarily directly looking for you. So I think yeah. YouTube is to me the essential and Vimeo would be the bonus. Yeah, I agree. All right, we have, uh, would love practical guidance about best mic and lighting to purchase, how to's, I'll be troubleshooting, I will be shooting these myself. Uh, and so I, oh, it looks like Connor already dropped in um, some of those into the um, comments, the Rhodes Art Lab, he's on it. Um, but how do you, say there's other things that people wanna buy, 
what's the process that you guys go through to decide this lav mic versus this? I mean, of course, you can go to your website and look at what you recommend, but like, are there any kind of best practices? Like, these are just really good brands that usually put out good quality, or like, how do you figure that stuff out? Yeah, uh, Rode. Rode is a really great brand for mics. We use a lot of their stuff. Um, uh, and besides that, I mean, honestly, I, I look at Amazon reviews. I see what people have said, and then um, you just gotta. It's not that expensive. You just gotta try it out and um, make sure that it works the way you need it to, for your purposes. So my kind of rule of thumb is you don't really, at least for musical stuff, I don't ever want to buy a musical instrument without having played it. Um, with Amazon and stuff, you can't really do that. You gotta try it out. But um, take advantage of their return policy. Send it back if you don't like it. Um, like we, we had someone buy a mic that we suggested it wasn't working for some reason and they were far away from us. I was like, I wish I could get my hands on that thing and figure out what's going on, but I think you just have to return it. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's see other questions. Oh, here's a great one. Uh, Carl's asking length of time for videos. Also the difference of a professionally shot video versus home shot. And I would actually great add question. the length of time based on platform and purpose. So like yep. a Facebook ad versus just uploading it to your Facebook page. So length yeah. of time and professional versus home. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to answer that question with a broader answer. Um, think of um, the more people you're sending it out to, the shorter you want it to be. So 15 seconds to 30 seconds is what you want for like a big social media blast, you know. What would be really awesome if if that led into led people into a, a fuller version of the video, maybe even 2 to 5 minutes of like a content video. That'd be really what you want. Like give them a big cheeseburger, you know, of content to bite into. Um, so you give them a little taster and then a big, a big meal. And then, um, and then that can lead into, um, what, what we like to do is like, uh, uh, like have, have people uh, subscribe when they, when they watch that big content video, have them have to enter their name and email. And then you can send them follow-up campaigns of like, of videos or content or whatever you want and that can be you know one to two minutes and then on your uh, website just have parked right on your front page a one to two minute video that um, speaks to the pain points of your client and calls them to action of, for a, a first uh, appointment so that's kind of what I recommend so I would say like a 15 to 30 second video on social media leading to a two to five minute video content and then leading to um, the kind of your your front page of your website, one to two minute. Um, just here's here's uh, the pain points that I that I handle and how I help people, and here's how to call to action. Then I'm going to answer the second question: Is what's the difference between making your own video versus um, hiring someone to do it? Um, I am not. We are not like uh, you know magic people. We simply come alongside therapists and help make sure that all of their branding and scripting is on point and clear. Um, I think people kind of get frustrated with how um, long the process is, but if you have someone who's walking through it with you and, and helping to sharpen you and to um, kind of bounce those things off and making sure everything is cohesive, that's what we do. And then we can bring in our nicer equipment that you don't have to spend money on. Um, we can uh, make sure all the sound sounds good. And if something doesn't turn out, we'll handle it. You know, we'll we'll yeah. make sure it's fixed, and we'll edit it, and and we'll also be there to help you get it online in the right way, and make sure it's getting the right views, and answer any questions post productions that you have. So, I was that, amazed at the only... consulting client that I sent your way, and like when he did that launch of his video, and like reached out to me and other people, like, can you please share it? And just seeing how he knew exactly what to do to get the most out of that out of that video is super yeah. cool. I think he had like. 10,000 views in the first like two days or something crazy. I was just like, yeah. what? He, um, he sent us an email like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, yeah. One last question that's coming in uh, in the chat area. People are asking about using your laptop versus your phone. Um, I guess that would probably depend on the quality of your, um, your video in your mm -hmm. laptop, I'm guessing. But what other things should they consider in regards to their video that they can do on their laptop versus on their phone? Yep, yep. The, what you just said is, is great. I, it really depends on the computer and what, uh, like my, this camera I'm using right now is not that great. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it's funny uh, that the video guy's talking and he's kind of grainy. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't do this, you know, web webinar that often. So, um, uh, yeah, like th that's one thing I would say. And 
most people probably don't know how good their camera is. Um, yeah. So uh, Maybe that's test them both out and just see yeah what yeah you can buy like um, webcams you know for a hundred bucks something like that um, with high resolution so um, that's nice but um, the other the other main thing that I think people run into is um, is they do you see how my camera is right now I really shouldn't have it like this um, you see how you're kind of looking up at me and I'm kind of looking down and you see these weird angles um, or I guess people don't see that right now you're open up different things but yeah. um people see like um uh, weird uh, angles in the in the in the ceiling lines and stuff um you want to really put um your computer if it was on screen uh, the camera Sorry. again you want to no it's fine you want to put your um computer more up an eye level so that it um you know you have more uh recip reciprocity with the person that that you're talking to so you feel like you're talking at a level with them that's what you want 